Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romance books that have A plus banter. Baby, baby. I'm going to preface by saying sorry if you hear the fan, it is very hot in Texas. I absolutely love when a couple is bantering in a romance novel. It is just catnip to me, give me it now. I've made a previous video talking about great banter and romance novels. So I'll link that down below if you want even more recommendations and haven't seen that video yet. So let's, let's get started, okay? Uh, first we're gonna talk about our contemporaries and then we're gonna get to um, a fantasy, a historical, and also an alien romance. I'm, I'm sprinkling in a few different subgenres for you. First I have Getting Schooled by Christina C. Jones. This one takes place in college. However, both characters are above the typical college age range. Our heroine here, she is a TA actually for her mother. So she grades papers and essays that are for her mother's class. She ends up across one paper by one student that she's just enthralled by. She's basically falling for this person through the writing of their essays. Like she loves their essays. And then she realizes who the person behind the essays is who the actual person is and she's not the happiest it's because he's the kind of like grump in her mother's classroom and they don't really see eye to eye all that often anyway the two of them banter and bicker so often in here and i love it the hero in here is also an amputee so there is disability rep in here and i just i loved the bantering between the two because the heroine is trying to figure out why she's falling for this guy's writing, but not the guy himself. <laughs> this book was just so much fun to read. Of course, we have the classic The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I feel like if you haven't read this book yet, or know about this book at least, you're living under a rock when it comes to the romance genre. This book centers around Lucy and Joshua. They are rivals in the workplace. So they both are personal assistants, I think, for their respective bosses and a new job opens up at the company and both of them want it. And so they're fighting for this job position. But the fire and like angst between the two, the tension turns into this hot, steamy goodness. And like the dam finally breaks between the two and they cannot help themselves. <laughs> this book is full of banter because this is an enemies to lovers. And I feel like enemies to lovers really has the A plus banter in it. They also play kind of like little jokes and little digs at each other <laughs> to piss the other person off, which was fun. So fun to read about. I have Neighbor Dearest by Penelope Ward next. This one is actually a kind of a little bit animosity to friends to lovers romance. Our heroine moves into this apartment complex after having a bad breakup with a guy and she does not really get off on the right foot with her next door neighbor, Damien. He has two large and very loud dogs that bark constantly and have pushed her over once or twice. And then one day she's on a therapy call with her therapist and um, she realizes how thin the walls are in said apartment complex. And she's talking about something very embarrassing that has happened to her recently to her therapist and all she hears is this snickering and laughing through the wall because guess what? Damien heard about her embarrassing tale. So everything kind of spirals from there. It kind of breaks the ice between the two. They become very close friends. They spend a lot of time together and that romance turns into something more. The banter in here was just so amazing. It was so funny. These two are very funny with each other. If you want a good banter filled friends to lovers romance, I really recommend this one. Beautiful Player by Christina Lauren is one of my favorites in the Beautiful Bastard series. I love Love this one probably because of the banter. This is another one where it's kind of like a friends to lovers bantering relationship. So Hannah in here I believe has moved to Chicago or New York. I'm gonna say Chicago because I think that's right. Anyway she's moved to Chicago um, to do her job. She is a um, lab tech I'm pretty sure. I don't know she does some kind of research in a lab and that's all she really does. All she does is wake up in the morning, eat some breakfast, go to the lab, come home, sleep and do it all over again like she doesn't really consider herself to be a very sociable person outside of her job her brother and dad kind of have an intervention with her and are like hey anna um all you do is work you need friends you need a life how about you call up will who is her brother's uh college roommate best friend and uh hang out with him because he just moved to the city too and she's very hesitant on this at first because when she was younger she had the hugest crush on will so i think there's like a 
eight year age difference between the two. When she was young, her brother would come home from college with his best friend over winter break or summer break, whatever the case may be. She had this little schoolgirl crush on him. And so she doesn't know if she's going to be over said crush when she comes in contact with him again. Anyway, the two of them have a lot of fun together. They first meet up and they decide to go on runs every morning together, I believe at a park and the rest kind of goes from there. They become very close, very friendly. Um, the hero is kind of hesitant to think romantically about Hannah because that is his best friend's little sister and he knew her when she was a little kid, but he cannot help himself. Hannah is just everything to him and their banter and the um, humor in here is just a freaking plus. It's one of my favorites in the series for a reason. The Wild Air by Karina Halley is one that I don't talk about often, but I feel like more people should read because I think it's a great, royal romance. Our hero in here is Magnus and he is the crown prince of Norway. He is a very daredevil, goes for risks type of guy, kind of a rakish dude. Anyway, his most latest scandal has kind of almost put his family down the toilet when it comes to like the paparazzi and the press and their family is not, not having it. So they give him a deal. They say, you will either abdicate the throne because we're not for this attitude or you're gonna get married. Then enters Princess Isabella. She's the princess of Liechtenstein, Lincoln's Liechtenstein. I, I can't say that country. I am so sorry. Anyway, Ella is not for this. She does not want to get married either, okay? Especially to this man who cannot calm the F down. <laughs> they get into this arranged marriage that neither of them want to be in. It's full of banter and bickering between the two. They bicker constantly because they don't want to be in this situation but they are very attracted to each other physically. Um, and then they learn to love each other, obviously on the inside. But at first there is a lot of animosity and a lot of angst and it really comes through in their banter. I next have Misadventures of a College Girl by Lauren Rowe, another college set romance. So Zoe is a freshman at UCLA and she is sick of being innocent. If you catch my drift, she wants somebody to take her innocence. And um, she's like, you know what? I don't want a relationship at this moment. Um, I'm a freshman in college. I don't need that right now. You know, I'm gonna focus on me, but I do wanna have this particular thing checked off of my list. So how about I go find the college, the campus bad boy womanizer and just have him take it and then be done and I don't have to worry about it. That's her point of view here. She then comes across Tyler at a college party. And he's the type of guy that literally wears the shirt, God's gift to womankind, scrawled across it. And she's like, perfect. That's the dude, that's him. They get to making out, get to getting it on. And Zoe lets it slip that this is gonna be her first time. And Tyler's like, whoa there, no, no, no. I am not, I don't get with girls like that. No, that's not happening. And she's like, okay, fine, bye. I'm gonna go find someone else then. <laughs> and Tyler's like, what? what are you talking about? He then makes it his like life mission this semester to get the girl who told him no. Even though he said no first, honestly, but it's very funny. The two of them banter a lot, they bicker. And Zoe is not afraid to like tell him like, you're not hot crap. Like you're just a guy, chill out. <laughs> Another college set one is A Jock Row by Sarah Nye. This one is so funny to me, I love it. Okay, so our heroine goes to a college baseball party um, at like the baseball house with two of her friends. And the two of her friends don't really know that much about baseball, but our heroine does. Her name is Scarlett. Anyway, so she is at this party with her friends and they're around these baseball guys and they're making up lies to try and get in her friend's pants. And they're like, oh yeah, we won the college championship last year. And Scarlett's like, no, you didn't. This, this school won, what are you talking about? And these guys are sick for blocking them. And they go up to the captain. I forget his name, what's his name? Oh, his name's Rowdy, right, <laughs> Rowdy. So they get Rowdy, the team captain, and it's like, hey, you need to take care of this girl. She's blocking all of us from getting with these ladies. Like she needs to go. And so it's Rowdy's job to kind of kick Scarlett out. And um, they're on the porch of the house. And she's like, well, can I get my friends? Like, we gotta go. And he's like, no, you gotta stay out here. And she's like, well, I'm not gonna abandon them. So I'm just gonna sit on the porch until they come out when they're ready to go. And Brownie's like, well, I guess I gotta sit with you then to make sure you don't come back in the house if I leave. And so the two of them spend the night talking to each other on this porch. And then they end up coming back every, like I think Friday night to just sit and talk on a porch instead of go to a party. The beginning scene in here when he is kicking her out is just hilarious. 
the things they talk about at the beginning are so funny. It's so funny. The banter, the angst between the two. But it is like more of a slowish, less tension heavy one compared to the other ones on this list because you still get to see the friendship develop between the two. Okay, so a fantasy romance that I would love to mention is A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. This one. Oh my word. I love the banter in here. The enemies to lovers angst between these two is a freaking plus. So Kat in here is a magical being, a very magical being that's very coveted, coveted called a kingmaker that exists once every 200 years. And they basically have the power to tell if someone is lying or not, which is a very coveted power. So she's kind of on the run. People are trying to find her, capture her. And so she's disguising herself as a soothsayer in this traveling circus, thinking no one, no one's gonna find her. No one's gonna realize who she really is. Enter Griffin. He is from a neighboring kingdom and he just conquered the kingdom and put his sister on the throne. And he's trying to find a way to keep his sister on said throne so no one overrules her and no one takes her over. So he comes across Kat in this circus and knows immediately what and who she is. And he's like, perfect. He kidnaps her to take her back to his land. And he has like this magical chain connecting both of them so she can't run away from him. And the, oh my gosh, these two are everything. Kat and Griffin are everything. I love them. You get to see them and their relationship span three books. The enemies to lovers aspect in here is amazing. It's really only really apparent in book one, um, but the banter I feel like spans all three books because that's just how their relationship is. A historical that I have is Any Duchess Will Do by Tessa Adair. This is the fourth book in the Spindle Cove series, but you can definitely read it on its own. The Spindle Cove part in here doesn't really pop up all that often. So this one out of all the books in the series, I would say please read it as a standalone if you're interested in it. We have another Griffin hero, another Griffin main character. So Griffin is a duke and his mother has been hounding and bugging him to find a wife. And he just, he doesn't want to get married. And so his mother takes him on a trip to Spindle Cove. If you don't know what Spindle Cove is, it's a town where kind of like spinsters and single ladies like to hang out to get away from society. Anyway, she, ta she takes him to Spindle Cove, walks into this bar or this store or whatever. And I was like, okay, pick one woman here, one woman here, and we will take her back to London and I will give her basically duchess lessons to teach her how to be a duchess and to be your wife and you will get married to her. And he's like, okay, bet. I'm gonna pick the barmaid because she's not gonna be good at that. <laughs> and he takes her aside after he picks her and is like, hey, I will pay you so much money if you make sure to be the worst duchess like possible, if you make sure to do so bad in these lessons. And she's like, amazing, I wanna open a bookstore. So this money's gonna help me open a bookstore. I don't wanna be a duchess. <laughs> and so they go to London and she does these duchess lessons and the two of them fall for each other, even though that was not their plan whatsoever. The banter, the angst between the two is so good because they don't want to fall in love with each other. They have these plans set out for their lives and uh, falling for this person is kind of screwing it up. <laughs> and the last one that I want to mention is an alien romance. This is actually book four in one of Ruby Dixon's series. This is Deceiving the Corsair. This series is about um, a bunch of space pirates <laughs> living on this spaceship. So there's four pirate besties, space pirate besties <laughs> living on this spaceship. And one of them, his name is Centaur. And so far he is the one guy on the spaceship who does not have a mate, but he hasn't been telling his friends that he's been like video voice chatting with a another navigator, another pirate from another ship whose name is Zoe. And they have some fun, steamy, bantery times together over the phone at first. Um, but Zoe is very afraid to tell Centaur who she really is because she is not a Sakui alien, she's a human woman. And she thinks like, oh, no one's gonna actually wanna be with a human woman. They're gonna wanna be with an alien. But Centaur makes it his life mission to actually track down Zoe and her spaceship to figure out who she really is. And I just, I love this one. I do recommend reading the other books in the series, but all of them are really fun too. But anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 recommendations for you that have amazing banter in them. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a star emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.